Coming up on Ag Week TV, South Dakota lawmakers reevaluate the method to value land for property taxes after unintended consequences. We'll have more highlights from this year's Commodity Classic in Orlando, Florida. We'll share the outlook for potato production in 2019, and we celebrate National Ag Week. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Michelle Rook. We're back from Commodity Classic in Orlando, where trade was again the focus among all of the commodity groups represented at the show. Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue provided a cautiously optimistic outlook as reports indicate the U.S. and China are close to a trade deal. He expects a conclusion when the two leaders meet March 27th in Florida. Which we hope is imminent, but there again, I don't want to raise expectations because it's never over in, in negotiations until it's over. He says with the deal, U.S. exports to China could double or triple. However, farm group leaders won't declare success without China dropping their tariffs against ag goods, including soybeans. I think from a farmer point of view, we really need to have tariffs removed. That is going to free up the opportunity for soybeans to freely trade into China again. They also want clarity on if the recent 10 million metric tons of soybeans China committed to buy will be old crop or new crop. A China deal will also be good for corn farmers, but not as important as the USMCA. Unfortunately, ratification by the U.S., Mexico, and Canada may not happen without the lifting of Section 232 tariffs on steel and aluminum. AgriPulse's Spencer Chase has an update. Many in attendance were concerned about the Trump administration's continued use of Section 232 tariffs. Many assumed the tariffs would be lifted on Canada and Mexico with the completion of the new U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade deal, including Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue. But he tells reporters the tariffs have helped the president. President Trump uh, favors tariffs. I think I, I have come to the conclusion that uh, tariffs as a leverage mechanism are very effective. I think he's validated that. Once you use that leverage, I'm working to persuade him that uh, the leverage is lo no longer needed unless it's needed for enforceability going forward particularly. I don't believe we need that for uh, Canada and Mexico. Commodity organizations hurt by retaliatory action are calling for the tariffs to be lifted. American Soybean Association Chairman John Heisdorfer says the duties complicate an already tough planting season. You know, we're going to tighten our belts. Um, there's going to be a lot of things that, uh, you know, we'd like to do, but they're probably not going to be able to do this this, this year. Um, but we'll, we'll get through this. Um, it, it's tough, and if the tariffs were rescinded, it would help. Farmers worry with the tariffs still in place, Canada and Mexico will be hesitant to ratify the new agreement. Reporting in Orlando for Ag Week TV, Spencer Chase, AgriPulse. Beyond USMCA, corn growers are also focused on getting year-round E15 by June 1st. This week, EPA sent a draft proposal to the Office of Management and Budget on E15 and RIN reform. I talked about that with NCGA leadership. Well, joining us here from the National Corn Growers Association is Kevin Ross. And Kevin, I want to get up to date on E15. Where are we at? Are we going to have this done by the summer driving season, these rules? Well, I sure hope so. Um, Secretary Purdue put, uh, you know, put some pressure on, I think, for us at EPA. And, and uh, you know, we've been keeping the pressure up ourselves. They, they've also been very upfront about saying that they, you know, they think they were going to get the rule done or that they will have it done by the summer driving season. So we're keeping our fingers crossed and uh, very hopeful that still happens. Secretary Purdue says USDA has a plan B if that doesn't work. What is the plan B? You know, I've, I've heard a few rumors that uh, they may... Uh, I don't know how they say it, suspend some rules or, or just uh, essentially not enforce them. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. I'd, I'd certainly like, uh, like to think they'll just get the rule done and we can actually move forward in, in, you know, under, the, under the current rule, which hopefully is written well. Kevin, we've also heard that the WTO has indeed ruled against China in terms of some of the um, issues that they had on dumping in subsidies. And so that was good news for corn producers, wasn't it? Yeah, for sure. We think, um, you know, I, I, that's very fresh news. And so um, anytime that, uh, you know, an a anti-dumping case comes out in our favor, um, you know, we're certainly, <laughs> it's good news to our ears. But uh, uh, 
we want we want fair deals and uh, want to make sure that, uh, that other countries are upheld to the same standard. We still have to get USMCA over the finish line, actually even before we can have a good deal with China. So is that sure. going to happen? Yeah, I believe it will. That's number one priority at NCGA this year is making sure that's done. We can't afford to lose Mexico and Canada as our, as our big markets, so we got to make sure that happens. And give us a little aftermath after the Bud Light commercials. Um, you know, if you attack corn syrup, you're, you're attacking our industry. You're attacking a, a corn product, and you, you put corn's name out there in front of something like that, and you uh, are trying to look at it in negative light, we're going to defend that. We're proud of what we do and uh, grow a great product, and, and um, you know, cheers to the folks that uh, are, are with us on that. Thanks so much for joining us. Kevin Ross with the National Corn Growers Association. Up next on Ag Week TV, the South Dakota legislature continues to look for ways to value ag land for tax purposes. But first, National Ag Week begins March 10th. To celebrate, we'll have some facts from the states in our region throughout the show. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. Make sure your farm equipment is season ready with an uptime inspection from your Titan Machinery service professionals. Titan Machinery's team of Case IH factory trained service technicians has the knowledge and experience to find, correct, and prevent mechanical issues that could shut you down during the season. Your planting and harvest windows are short. For genuine Case IH parts and service, schedule an off-season uptime inspection at Titan Machinery today. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer. Do you have a vested interest in land? The upcoming Great Plains Land Expo is a must-attend event for landowners, developers, mineral interest owners, farm operators, and investors. Join us on Wednesday, June 26 in Fargo as we hear from a variety of industry leaders speaking on topics relating to land, energy, and minerals. You'll discover ways to capitalize on agriculture and energy opportunities and learn how to become a better steward of our natural resources. Early bird rates are available, so register today at GreatPlainsLandExpo.com. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you with a wide variety of bin options and accessories, along with site planning and superior customer service. Plus, from top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with generations of experience and dependability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckin's specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. Many states are looking for property tax relief. In South Dakota, the legislature dealt with the issue nearly a decade ago, but is revisiting it after some unintended consequences. This week, the House Ag Committee passed a bill to study how changes to the way soils are rated impacts taxes. Michael Pates explains in this week's Ag Week cover story. It does not make sense for landowners to be suing their own county because of a tax issue that can be fixed. Nine years ago, South Dakota changed from a market-based system for assessing taxes on agricultural land to a productivity-based system. Basically, ag land is either cropland or non-cropland. If it has rocks on it, for example, that you can't get through, you can't plant it, trees or buildings, that would not be cropland. In other words, we'd try to look at how, at how this land could be used. Unfortunately, at some point, we decided to determine cropland by its soil. The effect of the change has been that too much lower quality land has been overassessed as cropland based on soil type. You can see that it has various soil types on it. Last year, Hunstead sued the county after his artesian pond, driveway, and trees were assessed as cropland. Similar lawsuits are popping up statewide. Why does it make a difference, you ask? 
cropland has a value of two or more times higher than regular land. In a lot of areas, we've got grasslands that are being taxed at a rate that will equal 30 to 40 percent of the rental rate. And so 30 to 40 percent of the gross revenue is going towards taxes, and that's not right. So the South Dakota legislature recently authorized a pilot study to compare a new system versus the existing system. Hunstead hopes changes will be made under new governor Kristi Noem. I think she's committed to seeing this fixed. I believe it will be fixed. It's kind of, do we have the will? In Pierce, South Dakota, this is Michael Pates for Ag Week. You can read more on this story in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. U.S. potato exports continue to rise, up 175 percent in the past 20 years. Currently, one in five rows of U.S. potatoes goes overseas, with Japan, Canada, and Mexico the top markets. North Dakota and Minnesota are among the country's top potato producers. The Red River Valley, where most of the production occurs, is the nation's leader in red potatoes for chip, fresh, seed, and processed markets. And potatoes are now on the menu in 83 percent of U.S. restaurants. So we're already in a great position and we've, we've made some good strides in the past four years once we started working with uh, the organizations that own restaurant chains across the United States such as Wendy's, McDonald's, but also the higher end restaurants providing them new ways and innovative ideas on how to use potatoes and add incremental um, potato items onto their menus. Critics once questioned potatoes' nutritional value, but the popularity of spuds has rebounded, in part due to the industry's educational and marketing efforts. A main thing for us really is continue to educate the public of what they've forgotten about the, the nutritional value of potatoes. I mean, it's, we say more potassium banana. Well, you know, that, see, we got still people who say, are you kidding me? Is that true? Of course it's true. North Dakota typically grows just under 80,000 acres of potatoes, while Minnesota is about 45,000 acres. A regional potato agronomist thinks potato acreage will be strong this year, coming off a good season in 2018. Potatoes have at least been a crop where they've been making money on the last couple of years. But on the flip side, you know, if someone decides to go out and plant a couple hundred extra acres of red potatoes, that can kill the market. That's because potatoes are under a million acres in the U.S., so it doesn't take much change in production to affect the market price. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll have more from Commodity Classic, including a chat with the National Association of Wheat Growers president. But first, as we celebrate National Ag Week starting March 10th, Here's some South Dakota agriculture facts. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. This is Dennis Poliski reminding you the Grand Forks Area Equipment and Truck Auction has been rescheduled to March 29th, giving you extra time to make your buy or sell decision. You have a host of opportunities to sell your no longer needed unit, but none will bring you the results we're known for. The auction is well promoted, well known, and held in an environment that makes our buyers more focused. Great program, great facility, most important, great results. Once again, the auction is March 29th, at deadline March 6th. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. DTE is your headquarters for flatbeds and service bodies for your truck. Whether you need to haul bales, heavy commercial equipment, or take every tool with you, DTE has the truck equipment you need. We have over 200 units on hand or will custom build a flatbed or service body on your truck. Like this Dewey's bale bed with dual lift cylinder arms. Lift load and handle your bales with ease. When you need help at the farm, your business, or in the oil patch, count on DTE. DTE, let us build a truck for you. Better beef always. Join us for the Wolf Cattle Opportunity Sale on Tuesday, March 19th at our Sandy Ridge Ranch near Atkinson, Nebraska. This is your opportunity to buy some of the most efficient limousine, limb flex, and Angus beef producing genetics in the industry. Attend our pre-sale seminar on Monday and view the entire offering of 410 bulls and 50 females on site for the sale on Tuesday, March 19th at our Sandy Ridge Ranch, Atkinson, Nebraska. For more information, go to wolfcattle.com. How can one tillage tool handle most field conditions, residue types, and tillage practices? It takes a renegade. 
The Summers VRT Renegade. Switch from vertical to aggressive tillage and anywhere in between. Adjust blade angles, tillage depth, and more on the go, all from an iPad. Get the tillage results you want, like only the Summers VRT Renegade can. For more information or a demo, contact your Summers dealer. With the continued drop in net farm income, trade and getting the farm bill implemented is top of mind with the National Association of Wheat Growers. We've got to have that safety net that's in, that spells out uh, crop insurance, and that safety net is the difference between some of our farmers being in business or not. And crop insurance, we didn't see a whole lot of changes, but the fact that we kept that intact in the farm bill, that was really important too, wasn't it? It was. I always say we're our, our top three uh, uh, list of uh, priorities in, in, from NOG is uh, farm bill three times because it's been farm bill all the way around. We ha absolutely had to have it. So the one change that we saw is we are going to be figuring ARC County yields on RMA data versus NAS data. We know that that's helpful for corn producers. What does it mean for the wheat producers? Well, I think it's a little more true data. We, we can really depend upon it simply because it, it's the real deal. You got, you got uh, uh, yield in, uh, figures coming in every year, you know, just exactly what you made. And, and you can tell, tell exactly what your average yield is going to be. And when you guys are able to roll back and forth between ARC and PLC, will that be helpful too? It's, uh, nationwide, it's very beneficial. Some, some areas, as you well know, uh, the ARC is so much better than PLC and, and vice versa in some areas. So the, having that flexibility is, it really was uh, important to our farmers. And let's also talk about um, trade from the WTO perspective. There has been a ruling now against China in terms of the anti-dumping case against the United States. And how important is that for the wheat growers? I think very important. I think it'll help our exports and give us on a level playing field that we haven't been on in a long time. And I, President Trump has done a good job trying to get us there. And, and there's been some challenges. Uh, short term, those tariffs and embargoes have really been detrimental to the farmers, but long term we think they're going to be very beneficial and we're looking forward to that being all those uh, trade issues uh, going away and us getting back to what we do best and grow wheat and, and export it. All right, well we appreciate you joining us. Thanks so much, uh, Jimmy Music, joining us here, National Association of Wheat Growers President. The trade show at Commodity Classic featured more than 370 companies showing off their innovative products and many are based right here in the region. Brandt has a full line of grain handling equipment, including this 1537 field belt, which allows solo loading and runs off a gas engine. You can uh, use it uh, around the yard to uh, load trucks, or you can use it out in the field to load uh, fertilizer or seed into your air seeder. We can get uh, 7,000 bushels per hour out of this uh, machine here. So uh, as you're loading in the field, you can save a lot of time uh, in the loading process. Crary Industries was talking to farmers about their revolutionary soybean air reels. And we shoot air through that reel and blow the soybeans back up into the combine. In average conditions, combining beans, you can lose two to four bushel of beans on the ground just from shatter loss, the beans just falling out of the head, shaking off the plant. And our product will blow those back up into the header. In Total Ag Industries offers triple fan spray and ultra coarse nozzles that decrease off-target drift of herbicides like dicamba. With our ultra coarse nozzle, it's got a very precise target application as well as very large dro ultra coarse droplet sizes. So it typically will help a lot more in drift situations. The MagnaJet nozzles are also ceramic, so they last longer. Will spring ever get here to use these great products? Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. Weather portion of Ag Week now dealing with a couple of potential big storms in the upper Midwest and Northern Plains this weekend and again this week. The thing about this big potential storm, uh, and it, the, this time they're bringing a combination of rain and snow, at least to the general region, is it looks like as it moves through, it may be so much energy coming out of the atmosphere for a while that things kind of settle down for a little bit. Looking forward uh, for the next couple of weeks, maybe the rest of the month of March, it does look like it will be generally warmer, but generally still colder than average for the whole north central part of the U.S., which means we'll actually get into a little bit of melting, but probably not a lot. Note the split jet stream pattern and note the big wave coming out of the southwest this week. 
You'll see it really coming into play right about here. Sometime right about Wednesday, Thursday, another potentially monster storm system for the Great Plains. With the polar jet weakening and shifting northward again, Arctic air has really gone north, I think, for the time being. But I don't think the cold air is going to disappear from the face of the earth. And as the second week appears and the weather does begin to settle down a little bit, I think that cold wave may settle back into the northern plains. So long term thawing, melting weather is not really in the cards for us uh, over the next couple of weeks. This week, in addition to what's happening over the weekend, major storm system lifting out of the southwest midweek will bring rain, rain turning to snow and snow across the northern plains. And somewhere, this is likely to turn into a pretty big precipitation maker, thunderstorms in the southeastern states. Meanwhile, as we look ahead to the second week on the chart, a little bit later in the month, things will actually begin to dry out just a little bit with the rain and snow mostly on the eastern seaboard and in the far northwest and most of the middle finally beginning to show a chance to dry out just a bit. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. When the water's high and your yields are low Cause your fields have no place for water to flow Just one call takes care of it all Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. When planting season comes around, time is precious and you don't have a moment to waste. This spring, keep your planters rolling with a user-friendly seed tender from North Star Ag. We have seed tenders for every sized operation from Meridian, Unverfirth, and JNM. North Star Ag also sells a variety of Valmar spreaders, the leader in air boom delivery, and is a full-service Meridian hopper bin dealer. Visit NorthStarAg.com to see our complete new and used equipment inventory or give us a call. Farmers take pride in growing safe, affordable, nutritious food. And since over 90% of U.S. farms are family or individually owned, keeping land and animals healthy makes sense for all of us. If you have questions about the food you eat, talk to the people who grow it. North Dakota farmers and ranchers are your best source for reliable facts on food and farming. Visit findourcommonground.com and become part of the food conversation today. Brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Checkoff. For most, competing at state is the culmination of a season's worth of hard work. Now imagine participating in not just one, but two state competitions on the same weekend, and even the same day. Abby Stake from Moraine, North Dakota did just that last weekend, mixing agriculture and athletics. She played with Hedinger Scranton at the North Dakota Girls State B Tournament in Grand Forks. Stake also competed in the North Dakota State 4-H Livestock Judging Contest in Fargo, judging in the morning, then playing hoops that evening. Yeah, it's just crazy to think that, and you always remember it. And our basketball coach says you always remember state tournament. So just knowing that I didn't just do basketball tournament, I also did a state 4-H contest. Abby plans to attend the University of Minnesota Crookston in the fall, majoring in animal nutrition. Her livestock judging team placed fifth, and her basketball team finished fourth at state. When Ag Week TV continues, hear about a chance to have a national impact in the world of soybeans. But first, more facts to celebrate National Ag Week starting March 10th.
With the all-new GreenFit system from Rykard, Plug and Play is finally a reality when using John Deere AutoTrack guidance with existing new products like the Challenger 1000 series or all-new C-Series Rogue Gators from Butler Machinery. GreenFit is an authorized navigation interface that utilizes the existing John Deere AutoTrack guidance system to steer most Challenger tractors and sprayers. GreenFit eliminates the worry of learning and converting to a new steering system when buying an industry-leading Challenger from Butler Machinery. Learn more about GreenFit at butlermachinery.com. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 70,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Ag Week is excited to bring you the Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information right at your fingertips. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you wherever you are. Download the Ag Week app today. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. Egg Week TV Soy Insight, brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Council. Soybeans are a big part of the ag economy in the region, and the North Dakota Soybean Council is looking for farmers interested in impacting the future of soybeans on a national level. North Dakota has four seats on the United Soybean Board, and three of those are open for 2019. The North Dakota Soybean Council is seeking nominations from those interested in serving as a USB director. The farmer leaders of USB oversee the investments of the soy checkoff to maximize profit opportunities for U.S. soybean farmers. If you take a look at it, our uh, strategic plan that runs until 2021, um, uh, it's a five-year plan, and in that five years, we're going to be investing a half a billion dollars of farmer-producer money to promote research and provide some consumer education on why soy is the most complete protein out there. To apply or for more information, go to ndsoybean.org. The deadline is Monday, April 1st. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or download the Ag Week app. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. We'll see you next week.